Hi, everyone. You don't have to be familiar with the culture and history of ancient Japan to know who ninjas are. Everyone has watched a fascinating cartoon about a brave team of turtles and their master Splinter in their childhood. In the 90s, all the children of the planet followed the adventures of the four turtles – Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo. But the real ninjas are very different from what we see in blockbusters and comics. In today's video, we will tell you who the real shadow warriors are, how they trained and what weapons they used, and also find out whether you can become a ninja these days. Let's get it on! In medieval Japan, the image of a ninja was shrouded in mystery. Some believed that these warriors could fly, become invisible, and swim endlessly underwater without oxygen. Of course, these legends were mostly made up by the common folk, but there are really many things to admire about the ninjas and their way of life. The history of ninjutsu – this is how the art of ninja warriors is called in Japan – began around the 6th century. It is believed to have been created by Indian hermit monks called Yamabushi, who later brought it to the land of the rising sun. The monks from ancient Buddhist schools, who lived in the mountains of Japan, taught young ninjas precious knowledge about mastery of weapons, sorcery, and combat skills. Part of this training was based on five elements of Wu Jing – fire, water, wood, metal, and earth. The monks and their students sat for hours under the mountain waterfalls and walked on the burning coals to strengthen their body and achieve unity with nature. Unlike the samurai in medieval Japan, ninjas were not part of the feudal system, that is, the system of castes. In fact, they existed in their parallel world in separate clans. In the action movies, we see how the protagonist learns all the intricacies of ninjutsu within a couple of years. But in real life, this training began from birth, and its secrets were never shared with anybody save for the clan. The ninja skills were passed down to the next generation, regardless of the gender of the child. Ninja clans pretended to be ordinary village people, and there were many of them in medieval Japan. The inhabitants of neighboring settlements considered it their duty to destroy them. The ninja training began from infancy, and often the methods were simply cruel. For example, the ninjas hung the cradle with small kids in the corner of the room and swung it from side to side. What for? So that a small ninja could learn to brace for every impact and to land on the floor without bruises. In addition, by the age of eight, a little warrior had to be able to silently endure any pain, imitate the sounds of animals and birds, climb trees better than a cat, throw stones and other objects, see perfectly in the dark, hold his breath for a long time underwater, and be able to bend joints in any direction. The ability to see in the dark was especially important important for ninjas. No wonder they're often called the Shadow Warriors. Many of their operations were carried out in the dark. In order to develop this ability, the diet of young ninjas should contain a large amount of vitamin A, which improves eyesight. Not to mention they should train hard in the dark mountain caves. Well, the most important part of their training has always been the mastery of weapons. This training also began in childhood, and when the ninja was in its teens, he was already proficient with a special melee weapon and many other weapons. The arsenal used by the Shadow Warriors was incredibly large. Large. But the most famous weapons were the ninjato, or shino bigatana, which are often confused with the usual samurai katana in the movies. In fact, ninjas never used the classic katana. It was too long for a surprise attack and uncomfortable to wield. Right now, you can see the Japanese master demonstrating the art of wielding such a weapon, holding it with both hands. For this purpose, the handguard of the sword was made larger than average. By the way, according to legends, sometimes poison or poison needles were hidden inside it, and they were used to quickly eliminate the foe. Another integral part of the ninja military arsenal was the deadly stars, called shurikens, known to many from anime and computer games. The name of this weapon is translated from Japanese as Hidden Hand Blade. It is a flat metal plate with sharpened edges, usually shaped like a star. It was often used in battles by the Shadow Warriors. Usually, the shurikens are thrown by the same move one does when dealing cards. <laughs> several pieces at once. But the real ninja knew how to throw them from any position, as well as how to use them in everyday life. For example, to cut a rope. In order to inflict a deadly wound, 
the shuriken had to hit the carotid artery. In other cases, this type of weapon could only stab the foe slightly. Therefore, for greater efficiency, ninjas coated shurikens with poison. Japanese shadow warriors also used kama, a small curved blade, mounted on a short handle, which looks like an agricultural sickle. The ability to wield this weapon is a separate martial art called kama jutsu. In addition, the ninjas used different variations of traditional kama. For example, kusarigama, a traditional Japanese weapon that consists of a kama on a metal chain with a heavy iron weight at the end. This weapon allowed the ninja to entangle the opponent's weapons or immobilize them, just like the mask demonstrates in this video. History says the last professional ninja clans were destroyed in the 17th century, but there is no doubt the culture of shadow warriors left an indelible mark on Japanese history. Some of their culture is still alive thanks to groups of enthusiasts who dedicate their lives to the art of ninjutsu. <laughs> One of such masters is Masaki Hatsumi, the Grand Master and founder of the Bujinkan Organization. He was the man who uncovered many previously unknown ninja secrets in the late 20th century. Since childhood, Hatsumi has been learning other Japanese martial arts, karate and judo. At the age of 27, he met his mentor Toshitsugu Takamatsu, the patriarch of the Togakure Ryu school established in the 13th century. Hatsumi learned all there is to learn about the art of being a ninja from him, and these lessons were not held in the cozy confines of the sports gym. Hatsumi is 87 years old now, but he continues to teach the young generation the wisdom of ninjutsu. People believe he's the one who started the so-called ninja mania. Hatsumi's many tours around the United States and the countries of America and Europe helped spread ninja culture and culture in movies, comics, and sports schools. Sensei traveled the world to promote the spiritual part of ninjutsu art and thereby break the stereotype that portrays the shadow warriors as cold-blooded killers. <laughs> Today, people flock from all over the world to the city of Noda, where the legendary Bujinkan School is located. People stay in Japan for decades to master the ancient Japanese arts of Budo and Ninjutsu. According to Sensei, the main secret of successful learning is self-control. You can see one example of this skill in this video, which shows students of the Bujinkan School pass the tests. A man with a long bamboo sword stands behind the student. The student needs to anticipate, with his eyes closed, the attack and dodge it. This ability requires an incredible level of self-control and combat intuition from the young ninja. This sensei called Jinshi Kawakami is often considered the last ninja of Japan. And this is actually true. He is a descendant of one of the oldest Japanese clans called Ban, which specialized in espionage. According to Kawakami, he started to learn the art of ninjutsu at six years old. During all the years of his training, sensei mastered the most incredible techniques of his ancestors. For example, he can hear a needle drop in the next room and dislocate his joints. However, unlike the world-famous Sensei Hatsumi, Kawakami decided not to teach students. He says that he wants to carry ninja secrets with him to his grave. Kawakami says ninjas with their techniques of professional espionage and murder have no place in the modern world. Instead, the Japanese master decided to devote the rest of his life to self-improvement and the study of ninja history. For example, he is the honorary director of the Iga Ryu Ninja Museum, located near Tokyo. We would like to dispel several myths about ninjas that permeate pop culture. The myths say ninjas have supernatural abilities. While in fact, every seemingly unnatural skill can be explained by years of ardent training. For example, ninjas cannot turn invisible, they just use smoke bombs and then hide under the water, breathing through the sheath of the sword. Ninjas can escape from any rope restraints, because when they are tied up, they tense their muscles, and after that they simply relax their body to loosen the ropes. And finally, ninjas can walk on the ceiling only with special braces on their shoes. But we have to admit, not everyone can master the way of the ninja. You have to endure a huge amount of pain, exhausting workouts, develop inhuman physical and emotional strength, and face many dangers. That is why the Shadow Warriors are still admired by fans of martial arts and ordinary people to this day. This is it for today. See you soon!